I'm not gonna sugarcoat this video. Today we are going to full send it as the white scars say. Some would even say pushing P. We're talking about the fourth alpha giga chad in the entirety of the 30k setting. When you think of Sigma male, you should be picturing like the Emperor or the, the Silent King, but like in the background, you would definitely see this guy. Barbarous Dantioch is a man who not only defied his legion, his Primarch, but even prevented the Night Lord's legion from wreaking devastation on the Ultramar system. He's a man who became a brother to the rivals of the Iron Warriors and most certainly caused the Tyranids to start heading towards our galaxy. So like... Yeah, he, he, he did some pretty cool things, but you know, giant devouring space bugs probably isn't the best thing to put on his resume. Before we start, I wanted to give a quick thank you. We just grew this small community to over 1,000 subscribers, and that is just like such a huge milestone. So genuinely, thank you. However, make sure you like and subscribe before I tell the Night Lords and Boltons from Game of Thrones to start making balloons with your skin. Barbarous Daniok was an exalted warsmith in the 4th Legion, the Iron Warriors. He's one of the few space marines that knows more one-liners than just iron within, iron without. Known for his excellent strategic plans and building fortifications, I mean, like, go figure, he's an Iron Warrior. Dantioch had a good thing going for him in the days of the Great Crusade. Perturabo even valued his wisdom, but saying Perturabo valued anything other than himself is, you know, you're really stretching it. Perturabo is a type of person who you could show a red colored crayon and he would say it's a blue waffle. We first learn of Dantioch's exploits as he takes the command of the 51st Expeditionary Fleet against the Xenos known as the Hrud. Now the Hrud, that rhyme with Kurud, <laughs> That was stupid. Are downright 100% Xenos tomfoolery. The Hrud are kind of strange to look at and are even harder to perceive as they have powerful warp magics that allow them to distort reality and even advance time on objects around them. What are you doing, cat? Are you scratching yourself? Let me help you. Scratch, 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 scratch. For those of you who haven't caught on yet, that means they can decay anything around them within seconds, causing a guardsman to age into corpse rations, uh, their armor to rust into peanut brittle, and the field being so strong that they are even able to rapidly age a space marine in minutes. Protorabo, knowing the danger these Xenos possessed even to space marines, foolishly volunteered his legion's might to eradicate them on the fortress world of Golkis. Uh, did he need to do this? Nah. He was really just trying to get the Emperor's favor and like, hey dad, look at me, I'm pretty cool. In his stupidity, he basically just reached in his bag of space marines and said, random bullshit, go! Kind of sounds like something Fulgrim would do, honestly. Thousands of space marines would die in this reckless waste of time. Like, the Xeno's psychic might was overwhelming. Just one of these creatures could annihilate space marines with ease, but they became even stronger in groups, pulling their powers together to age a space marine into dust within seconds. Which, for those who don't know, space marines can live to be over a thousand years old. Granted, that rarely ever happens as space marines are put in the damn blender when it comes to dangerous situations. But still, you get the gist of what I'm trying to say. This shit should have been avoided at all cost. There was no reason to go to Golgus other than for pride. Dantioch knew this, but still he carried out his orders to his Primarch and the Imperium. The battle with the Hrud was brutal. Guardsmen, Mechanicus, and Space Marines alike fought bitterly against them until the two forces came to a total standstill. The Hrud, unable to defeat the Iron Warriors, pulled out their ultimate trap card from Yu-Gi-Oh! and said, Frig this shit, I'm out. A massive enclave of the species got together and physically yeeted their homeworld away from the Iron Warriors decimating any of the fleets that were nearby the planet and teleporting Golgus to Emperor knows where. Thousands of wasted lives and for absolutely nothing. Dantioch himself didn't even come out unscathed as he was aged to old as hell for a space marine. His body had constant aches, however his mind was still sound like that of a younger man. Dantioch being the stud that he is filed a complaint with the HR department of the Iron Warriors, which just happened to be Perturabo. Dantioch had prepared a five paragraph essay as well as a well thought out powerpoint to show his lord father. Hell he even had spiffed up his power armor to still show pride in his legion. There was just uh, two problems. One, Dantioch because of the aging was fugly as hell. I'm talking Nurgle's left nipple kinda nasty. And two, Perturabo only cares about what Perturabo thinks. Striking his favored son and banishing him from his presence. 
Perturabo destroyed Danyuk's name within the fleet and even erased his history, stating that Danyuk should never show his face within the Iron Warriors again. Danyuk took that probably too literally by being the absolute unit that he was, he forged himself a mask of iron, the metal still hot from the forge as he placed the iron upon his face. Without hesitation, he dunked the white hot iron and himself into freezing water, forever forming the mask to his face. Now this wasn't the end of his tale within the Iron Warriors. Danyuk was still a high-ranked warsmith, so Perturabo banished him to a world called Lesser Diamantine. Basically, it was just a glorified guard post at a Prometheum refining world. He would never ever again earn glory in battle or ever feel the brotherhood within his legion. Which was true to a point. Perturabo has scarred his name in the Iron Warriors, but Danyuk's legend would grow into the exalted name of a badass in the Imperium of Mankind. Dantioch and a garrison of Iron Warriors would take up the defense of the rich Prometheum mining world. Soon after Dantioch's quasi-banishment from the Legion, the Horus Heresy would kick off in full swing, with Dantioch learning of the events after one of his former brothers demanded the use of Lesser Diamantine as a staging world for the traitor forces. The traitor Warsmith practically called Dantioch a baby bag bitch with no sauce, but Dantioch did indeed have the sauce. He had so much sauce, in fact, that another space marine from the Ultramarines Legion had witnessed Dantioch's refusal to bow down to his traitor Lord Father. Together, the small force of space marines would lead in the defense of Lesser Diamantine. Gilliman himself knew of Dantioch's banishment from the Iron Warriors and felt that this, in quotes, old space marine would be vital to learning how to defeat Perturabo. That Ultramarine was Nicodemus, an honor guard to Gilliman. Nicodemus would return to his Primarch while he ordered Dantioch to hold Lesser Diamantine until the loyal forces could rally to his aid. For an entire year, Dantioch and his men would repel the traitors who now invaded the world. Which, let me say, this just goes to show how goaded Dantioch actually is. He held out against his traitor brothers with a handful of space marines and guardsmen. Not something easily done. And when the traders finally had enough, they pulled out an Imperator class Titan on this damn planet. So that's the big one. No, 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 the other big one. Yeah, the one that would probably come up to your chest as a mini IRL. This god machine is a walking fortress monastery, and still, Danyuk clapped the shit out of the trader forces. Realizing that the planet was without a doubt lost, Danyuk set up a trap for the enemy. His last stronghold within the mining facility was above a literal ocean of Prometheum a highly combustible fuel that powers the fleets of the Imperium. As the Loyalists were pushed back into their final stronghold, the massive Titan was lured above the reservoir. Detonating the facility above the Prometheum, Dantioch dropped the Titan with the traitor forces into an ocean of fuel. Before he lit the Prometheum on fire, he held a sick EDM concert, and as the beat dropped, he dropped a match inside the fuel, literally turning the planet into one big firecracker, destroying the traitor god machine and any of the traitorous forces. The planet cracking and exploding from within as the light show behind was like pew 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 pew. You'd think that would be the end of it, right? Nah. Dantioch teleported himself and his few remaining men onto a traitorous Iron Warrior ship, and these guys rolled high on their deception check, tricking the forces until the Loyalists were in a position to eradicate their enemies on the vessel. With a sick victory in hand, this warsmith Dantioch would head to the Ultramar sector in an attempt to join forces with Gilliman. Now, a lot of information happens during this time, including the founding of Imperium Secundus, but to summarize, Dantioch and his men would go through a trial and be found loyal to the Emperor. Iron Warrior secrets would then be divulged freely to the Loyalist forces, and finally, Dantioch would be given a new task. Dandioch would be assigned with Alexis Pollux, a space marine of the Imperial Fist, to learn and master a then unknown Xenos technology called the Pharos device. I couldn't find a good picture of this device, so it's going to be represented by this egg. You're welcome. The device was somehow acting as a beacon during the crazy ass warp storms the traders had created, and were cutting off all the reinforcements heading to Terra. The best example to give is that the Emperor's own Astronomicon is a massive bonfire while the Pharos device is more like a big lighter. So with the Pharos device, all Loyalist navigators were breaking out near the Ultramar sector and regrouping with Imperium Secundus. Dantioch was eager to prove his loyalty and attempt to redeem himself to the Imperium, while Pollux was wary of the Iron Warrior. Just for context, the Iron Warriors and Imperial Fist are extremely similar, and being so similar, the two legions thought that they were always better than the other, creating some crazy competitiveness between the two and their Primarchs. These two space marines would have daily communication with each other as they did their best to learn the Xenos technology. 
So while Dantia would use this device that relied on feelings to communicate, Pollux would slowly begin to see his true intentions and willingness to serve the Imperium. Gradually, these two would develop a bond of brotherhood in their service to Gilliman. Pollux still stationed on McCrag, while Dantioc would be on the fringes of the Ultramar sector. The Pharos device would act sort of as a beacon very similar to the Emperor's own Astronomicon, though not nearly as powerful. It was soon discovered that eight other of these beacons still remained in the galaxy, but all the ones the two had found were inactive or inoperable. The last remaining of the beacon was a Pharos itself, and with the mental retardation of the Imperium, there was no way to make more of these devices. These two rival Legion members would become the bestest of buddies, cracking jokes and reassuring the other as they tried every day to use the mysterious tool against the traitors. Dantioch, even though not significantly older than Pollux, would take the role as a mentor to the somewhat younger Space Marine learning valuable life lessons like making sure to pull out the dryer lint or never putting dish soap in the dishwasher. All was sunshine and rainbows until the Night Haunter himself and his terrorist marines creeped upon McCrag. Dantioc was a driving force in alerting McCrag of Conrad Kurz's attacks on the homeworld of the Ultramarines. Using the Pharos device to sense the absolute hate and malice of Kurz, Dantioc was able to give relative information to the struggling forces of McCrag. However, the Night Haunter himself found Pollux on McCrag, decimating the guards and nearly killing Pollux within seconds. However, the Imperial Fist was able to just barely defend himself from the man who probably has never washed his hands. Hey man, I think you got him. You want what he's having? Dantioch knew his friend was about to die and instinctively put his hand out towards his newfound brother, every ounce of his being willing himself to save Pollux before he was struck down by the traitor Primarch. Somehow, using the Pharaoh's device, Dantioch was able to grab Pollux and pull him onto Sofa, the world where the device was located thousands of light years away from McCrag. Somehow, Dantioch had just traveled through space without using the warp, an absolute game changer for the Imperium. Pollux was still injured, but for now the two brothers were safe. Relying the information to Gilliman, the two men, now side by side, would have to figure out how to use the Pharaoh's device to completely bypass the warp, which would allow the loyal forces to return to Terra and aid the Emperor against Horus and his invasion. Kurz, probably pissed that he didn't get to have a murdergasm like he wanted, tasked the Night Lords to find Dantioc and the Pharos device while he continued his rampage on McCrag. During this time, the two would be unable to fully master the Xenos device, and eventually the Night Lords did find the fringe planet, easily invading and decimating the Loyalist forces. Dantioc and Pollux would be beaten to a pulp and tortured together as the Night Lords would try to divulge the secrets of the Xenos device. Neither of the men would break until finally Dantioc would be given a choice. His brother for the knowledge of the device. Pollux would be stripped and tortured in front of his closest friend, the stoic Imperial Fist never giving the traitors anything. But Dantioc could not give up Pollux, especially not having been kicked out of the Iron Warriors. Dantioc would beg the Night Lords to not kill his friend and promise to show them how to use the device to spy on Loyalist forces or like teleport directly onto Terra or maybe get on the dark web and see some big titty monster girls. I don't know, the Night Lords are weird and like, I, I wouldn't like that either, like, <laughs> yeah. I can practically hear you saying, Daka Daka, what the purple nurple kitty smashing frig is this? I thought we were learning of a man's man, a dude so sick that merely saying his name would give you inspiration. Well, I'm about to tell you, impatient dickhead, just shut up for, four, for like few more minutes, please. Dantioc wasn't going to give them shit. Instead, he mustered his willpower to give the device one simple command, one teeny tiny instruction that would be smack dab in the massive invading Night Lord's fleet. EXPLODE. The Pharaoh's device, acting as if it was an extension of Dantioc's beam, would open a reality-bending rift, shattering the crust of the planet and completely decimating the fleet of the Night Lords. Thousands died to his mental strength. So, despite being in a frail body, tortured for days, and already on the verge of death, and probably really having a hankering for some corpse rations, Dantioc found his resolve and a way to redeem himself before the Emperor of Mankind. The sky cracked, the earth broke into millions of pieces as Dantioc literally destroyed everything. Pollux watched as something beyond his comprehension lit up the galaxy, a shining psychic being across the entire universe. All of the Night Lords were destroyed. However, due to the strain of the action, Dantioc's body was dying. The Iron Mask lay shattered, and Dantioc's true face was revealed to Pollux for the first time, the dying Gigachat smiling as he saved his brother and likely prevented the traitors from using the device in their favor. Mere hours later, the Ultramarines, along with Gilliman himself, arrived, famously late as always. 
Pollux would lay his brother to rest and preserve his memory while Dantioch would go down in history as the baddest freaking space marine. Dantioch is such an interesting figure because not only did he defy his lore father, but also was instrumental in defending the loyalists from the invading traitor marines. Without his knowledge of their inner workings, Dorn might not have stood a chance against Perturabo's siegecraft. The massive Night Lord's fleet that could have completely destroyed McCrag, or the traitors could have used the Pharaoh's device to instantly travel between places creating what possibly could have been a direct access port to the Imperial Palace. The man who defeated an Imperator-class Titan, who found out the innermost secrets of a Xenos device, and the man who bridged the gaps between Iron Warriors and Imperial Fist, is truly the most loyal and badass member of the 4th Legion. His biggest whoops-a-daisy was probably exploding the Pharaoh's device, as the psychic explosion and backlash was literally a giant neon sign for the Tyrion saying, All you can eat buffet. At least, that is what is to be speculated, as the dark fringes of the universe is really only known to the Silent King, which is a story for another time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed learning about the legend known as Warsmith Barbarous Daniok. He's an extremely interesting character and will always rank high on my list of manliest men. For me, loyal marines of traitor legions seems to just hit different. Take Nathaniel Garo of the Death Guard or Rylanor of the Emperor's Children, all of them absolute panty droppers. Well, that's all I got. Thanks for watching.